So welcome, guitar enthusiasts of every stripe and denomination. It's me, Steve, the Guitar Nut. As promised, I'm finally here with the review of the Sterling SR50 Stingray, Sterling's imported and affordable version of the venerable Music Man Stingray guitar, which first came out back in the 70s in a slightly different configuration uh, under Leo Fender. This particular guitar, street price is at about $5.99. Uh, I shopped around a bit before I bought this one and uh, they seem to be the same everywhere. A um, few specs here in case you're curious. As I said, it's the model SR50. It has a poplar body, a roasted maple neck, which is a great feature at this price. So it also, also mentioned that uh, it has locking tuners, which is also a great feature at this price. Pair of Alnico humbuckers, three position switch, volume and tone, no push pulls, no uh, splitting, no special effects, just a straight ahead rocker. Let's see what else here. Vintage style tremolo bridge with the hand rest, which is something that's kind of um, exclusive to Music Man and, you know, Sterling guitars. 25 and a half inch scale, very familiar to anyone that's ever played. Uh, any Fender or indeed any copy of a Stratocaster for the most part tends to be 25 and a half inch scale. Neck radius is 12 inches, which is nice and relatively flat, same as a Gibson actually. Um, dot markers. This particular color is called Fire Mist Silver, although it has a decidedly blue hue to it. This guitar is also available in a color called Buttermilk which is one of those I think love it or hate it kind of finishes. Personally not a big fan, but I could see where somebody could be. Uh, and that version, you still have a roasted maple neck, but you have a rosewood fingerboard on it. And rather than white, you have a tortoiseshell guard. So uh, that's also available, same price. These don't come with any kind of a gig bag at this price, and certainly not a case, but they do fit pretty much any sort of uh, Strat or Tele generic case. Um, one thing I would mention is it is a bit weighty. This one came in at 8 pounds 8 ounces, which is a bit more than I would normally care to have, uh, although it hasn't held me back from enjoying it. Uh, also about the neck, it's a very unusual neck shape compared to, to what I'm accustomed. Let's see here, the, uh, the specs say it's 1.65 inches at the nut which is quite a bit narrower than you'd expect. It widens up to 2.24 inches, which is more traditional. What it feels like is it's very narrow, but quite deep, which you might think would be uncomfortable. And at first it is kind of an adjustment, but it actually feels quite good. Um, I've, I've come to enjoy it a great deal. And I should mention, I did take this uh, to a gig recently and played it for an evening and uh, didn't have any hand fatigue or anything of that nature. Um, I used a nice wide strap so the weight didn't bother me particularly. And uh, I only swapped out with one other guitar for a couple of songs. So it held up admirably. Tuning was great. These locking tuners, they're not labeled, but they certainly do the job just fine. I should also mention this is made in Indonesia. I just happened to notice the stamp on the back, so I would mention that. Uh, no doubt, before I make the... Uh, playing example, someone's going to want to know what exactly it is that I'm playing through. So let me set the guitar down for a moment and show you my rig. High tech here. We're going to grab this phone. By the way, I should mention, a while back I did a review of a uh, an old Rickenbacker that I had bought. It was converted from a left-handed 1967. Now you can find that in the old Rickenbacker anonymous uh, show files. Uh, but interestingly, just the other day, uh, someone wrote in and said, gosh, look at this guy. He's got thousands of dollars worth of guitar and gear, yet his uh, demo sounds like he recorded it with a phone. Well, I did record it with a phone, as will I be doing with this demo. But I've done some testing. Uh, this is actually the second time I'm doing this review. Uh, the first time the audio didn't come out like I'd hoped. Uh, and I think I might have the audio problem licked. So we're going to see. 
I think you should be able to hear the guitar just fine. So through the magic of, of guitar, uh, guitar, of uh, cell phones here, we're going to uh, flip this guy around and uh, show you the, uh, the rig that I'm using here. Um, this here is my amp. Sorry about the glare. I call this the ugly amp. This is a Ibanez TSA 15 head. Uh, probably one of the most underrated and best bargains and tube amps on the market. In fact, if anybody out there is really interested, I'd be happy to do a review on this amp. Uh, I liked it so much, as you can see over here, I actually bought a backup recently uh, for a great price. This particular one that I use all the time, the Ugly Amp, uh, came as part of a crazy trade deal that I did a few years back. Something I might mention in an upcoming episode, uh, people like to hear about trade deals and cool finds and the story behind this particular amp is, is actually kind of humorous. It's running through a 410 PV Classic cabinet that has no badge on it that's loaded with um, Jensen 10 inches. Uh, and let's see, onward to my pedal board. This is my carry-on live pedal board. Um, it's largely electroharmonics, as you see here. Tuner, the East River Drive, which is essentially a, a tube screamer. The glove, which basically is a Marshall in a box, and I have a Delta Digital Delay down here, which is one of the Guitar Center brand name things that came out a few years ago that I literally use just to get a wider spread on the sound. I also have this advanced EQ from Boss here, an EQ20, and uh, I use it primarily to balance the volume between my various guitars when I'm playing out live. So uh, hopefully those all showed up. I'll find out when I go to look at this. Um, again, we're high tech here, right? Uh, you'd really get a kick out of the little gizmo that I'm using to hold this phone up. It looks like a pair of little blue Smurfs hands. Uh, got it from my local animal shelter of all things. Okay, let's see. Hey, I'm back. Look at that. So no doubt someone will have something to say about the quality of my video and my audio and everything else, but you know what it is, what it is. So I might even make a comment about my hair, but I have a rare day off, so I have no product in my hair. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Um, anyway, so onward to the guitar and the sounds. And again, sorry about the glare, but I didn't feel like covering the windows today. Uh, am I being lazy? Well, maybe, but I have a lot of things on my plate today. So anyway, here's the guitar. We'll start with the neck position and clean. A couple of chords. <laughs> It's a neck position pickup, but it's not all wooly like some neck positions are. Now you can make it as wooly as you like with the tone control. But if you back it off all the way, it's basically unusable. Almost sounds like somebody playing next door through a wall. But you can dial in just a touch and get kind of a jazz tone. Sad attempt at playing some jazz there, a little West Montgomery octaves that I have no business playing. I'm a rocker, but that's all right. So uh, anyhow, that's your neck pickup, uh, clean. And it's got plenty of bite, plenty of treble. So onward to the middle position which, uh, interestingly enough, almost gives a bit of a telly sound. Tone back up. It's a nice, pleasing sound. Um, Onward to bridge position, which is what most people use all the time anyway. Clean it 
a bit shrill, which you can tame easily with the tone control. Or just leave it up and run it through a dozen pedals and uh, it shouldn't affect your tone all that much. You have all that brightness. Of course, if you're buying a Music Man, or indeed a Sterling, you're probably a bit of a rocker yourself, so you're more interested in what this thing sounds like driven. I'm going to use my East River Drive from Electro Harmonics, which is essentially a tube screamer, and uh, we'll stay in the bridge position. like a blend of clean and overdriven at the same time. Uh, somewhat reminiscent of a, of a clown overdrive, strangely enough, uh, without the $8,000 price tag. Kind of interesting. Okay, onward to the neck pickup. Brightness comes through even though you're in a neck pickup, which is sweet. It's actually a very usable neck pickup, good for rhythms. Also not bad at all for lead. That. Now, more gain. I don't have anything near heavy metal gain available here because I don't really use ultra high gain. But here's my electro harmonics glove, which, as I said, essentially gives you a Marshall in a box kind of a thing. Uh, bridge pickup. <laughs> trouble, but not unpleasant trouble, just a lot of it. Also keep in mind, it's got to think about how you're adjusting your amp. I have my uh, bass and treble on my amp set it right about halfway, uh, just for kind of a basic tone. You can get whatever you want, of course. And uh, I would mention that uh, I don't have the, uh, the EQ pedal on because I'm not trying to in any way affect the sound. Right, so onward to middle position. Let's see if we still get that kind of a clean blend thing here. Kind of. position with Marshall Gain. I'm inclined to think that if I were going to use this as my main guitar, I'd probably actually use the bridge pickup for rhythm and then swip, swip, switch over to the neck for leads because it just just how it sings. It's got a great lead tone. And we kind of enjoy it. So that's kind of the gamut. Now, I, if I had uh, some sort of a ultra high gain 
Mesa type sound here for you to listen to, I'd, I'd throw it on as well, but uh, I don't. But uh, the popularity of these guitars, uh, both versions, the American and the import, with the heavy metal crew um, tells me that they do well with high gain, you know, is also um, very popular with that group. Um, I should mention there's a, uh, what's the, the cat's name, uh, Kinsru uh, model available, similar to this, it's a little streamlined, uh, one knob and hot rotted, and uh, I've heard that one used in a very heavy music context, and it really does the job. I've got no reason to think this would be any different. So anyhow, that's the basics of your Music Man SR50 Stingray. Uh, as I said, the only thing I think I could make any kind of a complaint about is that it's a little heavier than I would like. Um, I haven't used the uh, vibrato much because I'm not a vibrato player, but I got the feeling with what I did try that it would hold up at least as good as any Fender, uh, American or otherwise. The neck came in perfectly finished, no sharp fret ends, which made me thrilled. Um, the action was slightly higher than I would have liked, which I easily rectified by a quick twist of the truss rod here, which is easily accessible at the bottom of the neck. You don't have to remove anything. Uh, you can either use the little tool that comes with it or virtually any small object that'll fit in there. Uh, I see a lot of guys using uh, case-hardened hex keys or something like that. I say case-hardened because if you use generic hex keys from, let's say, uh, Harbor Freight, you'll probably bend them before you'll move <laughs> the truss rod wheel. Um, how do I know this? Don't ask. Uh, but uh, it's true. But overall, uh, great guitar. I, I would highly recommend it. Certainly worth giving a try. If you're into a, a more Stratocaster sort of a setup, uh, there's also a, a version of that available. It's not a Stingray. Uh, that one is called, uh, help me out here, uh, the Sabre. Yeah, Sabre. Uh, named after a sword. And they also have a cutlass, which is also named after a sword. How they fell off the whole sword angle with Stingray, I have no idea, because I've never heard of a sword called a Stingray, but uh, maybe someone out there has, who knows. Regardless, once again, this has been Steve, your guitar nut, and uh, rock on until next time. I do have another episode of the regular show coming real soon, and uh, we're going to talk about a book, and I'm going to go over my number one guitar, because several people have asked. Uh, I've been a little reticent to do so because, uh, well, to be honest, the gents over at Rickenbacker won't be happy about it, but uh, it is what it is, and uh, I gotta be honest with uh, my community here. So uh, stay tuned for that, and uh, I'll see you soon. <laughs>